Hello and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be doing a review and a giveaway of a brand new plugin called the Smart EQ2 by Sonable. And I just want to start by saying that this is a sponsored video and they've given me a few copies of the plugin to give away. So if you watch to the end, you can find out how to enter the giveaway for free to win one of those. The reason I wanted to make this video and that this plugin intrigues me so much is because it claims artificial intelligence. It's using algorithms and special engines and whatnots to try and give your mix more clarity, more edge, more definition, either on your whole mix or just an individual track. And in this video, I'm just gonna show you some of the basic features of the plugin. I have both good comments and some criticisms as well. And I've been using it for a little while because I didn't wanna just rush to make this review. I wanted to try and learn and understand the plugin first. But for now, let's just get straight into it. I'm just gonna start by showing the website. So SmartEQ2 Intelligent Equalizer plugin. And what it claims to do is enhance detail, clarity, transparency after only a few tweaks experience mixing faster than ever before. So the idea is speed here and detail. Right now when I'm making this review, it costs 89 euros. So let's get right into the project and take a look at it. I'm going to cover the AI stuff and the smart stuff in just a minute. I'm just gonna cover all the basic features first. It's got everything you'd really expect in an EQ of this price, but it doesn't have quite as many um, bands as you might expect on other EQs such as um, FabFilter and whatnots. So you have seven normal bands, and these bands can be used in all, all the ways you'd expect. Um, shelving filters, bell filters, peaking, uh, high pass, low pass, and whatnot. Let's just take a listen to some of them. So I'm going to turn the spectrum on so we can see the frequencies a little bit. Add a little bit of low end. Okay, so it sounds really nice and clean. That's what we'd expect from an EQ like this. You can get really narrow cues and you can solo each band as you'd expect really identify resonances and remove them. You can change the zoom level. So, you know, if I change it to uh, 6 dB, boost something, change it to 24, cuts it back down again like that. So you can get the kind of detail and scope that you want. And this is where I meet my first criticism because while this is all great, and in my opinion, it sounds very transparent. It doesn't sound saturated or, or colorful in any particular way. It's a linear phase EQ, which is great because it doesn't mess with the phase but there's a lot of latency added. Now they do have a low latency version of this, but it's something like another 200 euros. So it'd be awesome if this one had a low latency mode, you wouldn't be able to record through this. I tried recording guitar through with the lowest buffer setting I could, it didn't work at all. It's not designed for recording through, but it's something I should say right away, this adds latency, your DAW will compensate for that and it will keep all your tracks in time, but it's not gonna work if you need to record through your EQ. The next little feature I'm gonna show is down here. So there's mid side control and also sort of a makeup gain. So let's play the loop again. So I can sum everything into kind of mono, make it more mid focused or make it wide or somewhere in between. You can also solo just the side information or just the mid information and there's makeup gain in case your EQing removes or adds too much volume. One handy button as well is that there's a flatten button. So if everything's just kind of messed up, you can just set everything back to, to zero. So that's what we would expect in an EQ. Any EQ that you pay money for, you'd expect a kind of really nice graphical user interface like this. I'm just gonna add that it can be completely resized, which is awesome, especially if you're working on bigger monitors or touchscreen displays. We'd expect all these functions. It sounds clean, sounds good, linear phase and whatnot. But let's talk about the AI. So this green band that's been hovering over us the whole time, you're probably wondering what it does. This controls the strength of the algorithm that's being applied to the music. I have this EQ loaded on the track that has this melodic loop on it. I'm gonna let the EQ listen to this by pressing this button, pressing play, and just give it a few seconds. It doesn't really need very long. I'm gonna pause that. And what it's done is created an EQ curve that tries to give this sound more tonal balance, more clarity and more definition. And this green band decides the strength of the algorithm. So do you want more clarity going to the top in the middle again, or do you want less clarity, make it more muddy, more subdued, so the exact opposite. Then you can also change whether it's acting only on the high frequencies, only on the low frequencies, and you can change the width so that you can have it in only a very specific tonal region. So let's set it quite wide and we'll listen to see whether this gives more clarity to that sort of melodic pad loop. So that's the opposite. And now if I bypass, it 
So that's off. I think it's safe to say that it definitely added more clarity and detail, but I think it boosted the high end too much. And the good thing about this algorithm is that you can choose where it affects. So I can tell it not to affect the high end, or if I want to, I can just take the high end and control it however I want anyway. So I can flatten that back out again and make it sort of more focused the way I want it to be. However, it did remove a little bit of the fun of actually figuring out where the resonances were, where the frequencies were that needed fixed and, and doing it myself. So that's kind of my only criticism, but that's uh, it's hardly a fair criticism. So I'm gonna move on to a different loop now because I'm getting a little bit bored of that sample. So I've got some guitars here. Um, this kind of represents a, a worst case scenario. Um, they're all quite muddy and they're all stepping on top of each other and they're all in mono. So let's just take a listen. <laughs> And what I would be doing here is trying to look at problems in the low mids, boost the highs a little bit, and then potentially stereo separate them just to give them a little bit of their own space. But let's see what the EQ here does. And what I'm going to show here is that you have different profiles. The last profile I applied was just a standard algorithm, just for clarity. This profile is like a preset. So I'm going to choose electric guitar. And this doesn't give it a special EQ curve, but it just lets the algorithms be a little bit more tailored for electric guitar whatever that means. So let's press record, press play. Algorithms already working. What we could hear and see is a lot of low end and, and low mids removed, a lot of highs added. So I'm going to make the algorithm not quite as intense and let's just take a listen. Sit in. Out. And again, I think it's very clear to see that there's a, a huge amount of detail and clarity has been added. The high end's a little bit too sort of quacky and bright for me, but if I want to reduce that, I can just take it down. So that's given it quite like a nice tonal starting point. Now, if I were to say, pan these guitars now with that cleaning up done, let's see what that sounds like. And if I bypass, it's a lot of mud there. With these profiles, you can save them as states, so you could record it through once, and then you can try a different preset, let that adjust itself, and then you can save that as a preset and then switch between states. Uh, states is not something new in an EQ. Uh, most of the EQs I have, you can have A, B, C, D, and you can sort of pick between different profiles. This is just exactly the same thing. So I guess what I'm saying is that for, as far as a regular EQ, it's pretty full featured. Now I know some people need more bands. I never find that on an EQ that I need 24 bands or anything crazy like that. If you do, then this one has only seven, but I guess they're not selling it as a crazy parametric equalizer with a hundred bands. They're really trying to sell the artificial intelligence thing. And my first impression when I tried this a week ago was that for like batch tasks, I could see this being incredibly useful for like my voiceovers for these videos where I don't care about having fun whilst I edit them. I just want to, I just want it to get it into a good tonal balance and export the track. I don't, I don't uh, have a lot of fun editing those voiceovers. When mixing music, mixing guitars, I enjoy diving in, changing all the settings. So let's try one more example. So I'm just going to jump to a different project. This was the lo-fi hip hop uh, song that I made uh, two weeks ago. When I was mixing it, I was kind of just mixing on the fly, nothing special. And if I go back to the tonal balance control, it said that my bass was too high, my high mids was too low. Let's just take a listen to it. It's quite sort of stylistic of that genre, but it's saying, you know, it's saying I have tonal imbalance, at least on the tonal balance control from Isotope. I need more here, a little bit less there. So now if I open up Smart EQ2, I'm gonna set it to record and then press play. Let's see what it decides to do. Okay, so as we can see, the algorithm is saying that I want to take a little bit of bass away, add a little bit of high mid. So I guess it's using something along the same lines as tonal balance control here. Now let's sort of play around with this and see if we can get some more clarity out of this mix. Clarity might not be what we want, but in this case, that's what we're looking for. So the reverse, more muddy, more subdued, filtered. Somewhere in the middle, let's bypass. Using headphones is not always the best test. I've been using it on my speakers before this video, but in the headphones, I don't hear any 
problems with like phasiness or digital haze or anything like that. It's quite remarkable how it's just taken that mix and really brined it up, but it hasn't made it sound too harsh or anything. And my only criticism here is that that might not actually be what you want. That probably sound, that's probably a more commercial curve than the mix I had, but I quite liked that my mix was quite mellow um, and quite warm almost. And for anyone wondering, you can turn an analyzer on for uh, the signal going in, the signal going out or both. And that analyzer can show either the average or the instantaneous signal. I know a lot of people care about the visual stuff when mixing, so it's got all of those visual features as well. I usually just focus more on, on the audio and hearing it. And what I would say about this is there's no doubt that it definitely gives more clarity, more definition, and sort of a, a more commercial kind of sound. But the, the only criticism is, you know, when I use plugins like this, nothing is going to take away from the fact that I have fun and enjoy tweaking these dials and opening up this EQ and, and figuring out where the resonances are and where the frequencies are and then, and then removing them and fixing them. And all of that problem solving is one of the reasons I mix. Obviously, I do want to end up with the best possible result, whether it's for me, for the client. I always want the best result, but how I get there is also important to me. And if it's a task where it's just like a batch task, I just need it done, I just need tonal balance checked in, this EQ is going to be great because it saves your ears, it does a lot of the thinking in a few seconds, you don't have to sit there frying your brain trying to find resonances and bad frequencies. At the same time, nothing's going to take away from the fact that I think almost all of us enjoy tweaking an EQ and problem solving. We enjoy setting compressor levels and geeking out about tech and stuff like that. So while I know that these kind of tools are going to form a big part of the future toolkit of mixing engineers, mastering engineers, and already form part of the current toolkit. I know that it's not going to get to a state where people like me and probably you would only rely on artificial intelligence to mix our whole track because I think a lot of us enjoy tweaking the settings. We enjoy figuring it out and, and doing all that problem solving. It's one of the things that gives us a lot of joy and probably a lot of satisfaction and pride when the final mix is done and you know that it was your doing. However, if it was just for a batch task, you know, say I had 10 guitar tracks to clean up and I just wanted to apply 50% of this algorithm to all of them and export them and then have a better place to start from, this is gonna be fantastic. For my voiceovers, like this one right now, if I just want to have an EQ, just get it into a better tonal balance and then I export the track, that's perfect. I see this for those sort of batch, sort of mindless and non-creative tasks. But when it comes to the more creative side and the more fun side of it, I think you're still going to want to take control over whatever EQ you're using. One of the great things about this EQ is that it's not just telling you you have to live with it. If I press play, I want my low end back. I'm just going to, there you go. You know, let's subdue the high end a little bit. So I'm still working with a bit of that algorithm. If I bypass it, still working with a little bit of the algorithm, but I've also got my own signature, my own taste kind of thrown in there as well. When it comes to the sort of value for money, I think it's priced fairly at 89 euros. When it was on 130 or something, I think that's maybe pushing it a little bit for most people. I think 89 is fair, especially with the student discount of 40%. It's quite competitively priced for these very sort of intelligent parametric EQs, but I think what they're really trying to sell you on is the AI capability of this EQ. I've also been doing some mixing where I've been trying to set an EQ myself in like a minute or two, see what I can get it to. And then I turn that off and I try the smart EQ and I just give it five seconds and see if it can do a better job. Sometimes it just identifies all the same things that I identified. Quite often when it came to the subtractive EQ, it just found the same problems I found, but it just found them in three seconds instead of me taking five minutes, taxing my ears, getting a little bit of ear fatigue and sort of losing my mind trying to locate problems and resonances. And it sort of made the mixing process feel a little bit more like mixing and a little bit less like just um, uh, finding and fixing problems. It strangely felt a little bit more natural as though the tracks I was receiving were just recorded a little bit better as opposed to it feeling like someone else was mixing them. I mentioned at the start that there was a giveaway so you can enter the giveaway by following the link at the top of the description box for your chance to win one of these plugins. It should take you to Rafflecopter where there's a few tasks you can do if you want to. None of them are mandatory and a few of you will be in for a chance of winning this EQ. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you in the next one too. Bye for now.